All right, uh, we want to get some perspective from someone who's in that area right now. And to do that, we have former KTVU reporter Lloyd LaQuesta, who lives in this part of San Mateo County, joining us now on the phone. Uh, Lloyd, we appreciate your time. Thanks for joining us this afternoon. Uh, how close are you to the fire, and, and what does it look like from your vantage point? Well, Alex, if there's any reason for optimism, the skies are showing it because uh, what was once dark smoke rising in the air has now become sort of wispy white uh, at a lower level. I'm a little bit to the south of the uh, the fire. Uh, I'm actually sort of, if anyone knows the area, where Kenyatta College is up on a hill. I'm on the slopes of Kenyatta College. And uh, I first started seeing this uh, oh, about an hour ago when I was driving home, and a fire truck started coming up behind me. So I quickly rushed home and uh, watched the pro progression of the fire. I just saw a helicopter uh, make a drop right now down there. So it, it appears that they've got a hold of the fire. But I have to say that this area, if anyone's familiar with this part of Redwood City, sort of Woodside, it's very hilly, sort of like the Oakland Hills, a lot of trees, and it's very, very dry. So what's happening right now is something that the neighbors here, we've all been talking about this and having plans sure. of if we have to get out in a hurry. Uh, we, we should be prepared. Uh, there is no evacuation in this area south of the fire, sort of the Emerald Hills Farm Hill area, for those who might be familiar with the, the hills of Redwood City. Um, so I think there's reason for optimism. The, there's not as many helicopters up in the air now. And like I said, it's starting to become white smoke. Yeah, certainly good news, Lloyd. We're looking at some pictures of the terrain that you talked about that firefighters are trying to make their way up into. All day, Lloyd, we've been talking about this very hot day. In addition to the dry conditions, what can you tell us about how the weather feels, how warm it has been in that area today? Well, it's, it's extremely warm, uh, uh, very, very hot, and uh, the sun is beating down a lot. And as I said, uh, you know, we're all up here very, very careful because of the amount of trees that we have. Uh, it's, it's very, very uh, forested up here. And we've already had, you know, warning some fire officials about taking care of our property and make sure that there's a uh, space between us and the trees, uh, a safety barrier. So this just uh, makes us more nervous because there's more yet to come, we, we know. But, and by the way, for a while, we sort of lost our power. Um, it's back on now. Um, I fortunately have one of these solar systems that kicks in when, when pg e goes out. But that's another uh, reason for concern is that we realize that we could lose our power here and the roads up in the hills here are very narrow, congested, and to get a big truck up here can be difficult. Uh, but again, I think we've, uh, we've escaped a, a possible big problem. I, I, I look, I'm very hopeful, but now comes the cautionary part because there's sure. still probably glowing embers. And fortunately, fortunately, there is no wind blowing. If there was a wind mm. blowing, then it could have really kicked this fire up, and that would have been a big problem. Yeah, I know. That's a good point. Obviously, extremely hot uh, this afternoon, Lloyd. But, but when we look at the, a lot of the smoke that's coming up from the fire, it's tending to kind of waft uh, straight up into the air for, for the most part, drift maybe slightly. So that's a good indication that you don't have any strong wind gusts. Uh, before we let you go, Lloyd, uh, we're, we're looking at these live pictures from the vantage point of the helicopter. It certainly looks like uh, parts of the fire seem to be relatively close to some of the homes, especially up on uh, one of the ridge lines we're looking at from your perspective, can you can you tell how close the flames are to, to any of the homes in that area? Well, I can't really look down to that area. It's, it's it's Edgewood Park is that area where it probably started. And there's like two different areas. To the north of, of um, Edgewood Road are basically homes that are sort of a track, you know, suburban type of setting. Sure. To the south where I live, these are homes that are sort of set in um, bigger lots and uh, just surrounded by trees. Very often you don't see the houses. But there are a lot of houses in this area dotting the hillside. And so I'm sure a lot of people are very nervous right now.
All right, well, uh, hopefully, uh, as you said, fire crews are, are able to get a handle on this fire here pretty quickly this afternoon. And again, as you said, it's uh, hopefully one of those cautionary tales for folks when you live there uh, close to, to that kind of vegetation, uh, you know, where you have that urban interface with the wild land. I really appreciate you taking the time and for your perspective this afternoon. Nice to talk with you, former KTVU reporter Lloyd Lequesta. Take care. We appreciate it. Take care. Thank you.